would want them to respond to that. I can tell you that my notes indicate that it's never been used before in Taylor. And again, the, the, the reference to me was going back to the failed experiment and it didn't work. We're going to get it done right. We're about to agree to spend 20 some million dollars. Oh, Mr. Chairman, what, what, again, just the level of expectation that I think that, that I felt we were talking about is repairing the base properly. That's what we did the core sampling for. That's what we wanted to identify is how much, how much right, work right, right. have you done in the base? Because that was, to me, the most important component of getting it right was that's what we didn't do in 08 or 06 whenever that was done. We didn't do any work to the base. So when we talk about getting it right, my, that's where my mind was. So, I mean, just so you understand that it, it may have been said and maybe the radar didn't go off or the light bulb didn't go off, but I wasn't thinking about a, a, a relatively new process that we were going to try in the city of Taylor. And although 10% looks like a small number, it's $1.5 million, and for that amount of money, we can likely get another road done. That's what we hired the experts for in the first place. We don't know this. You don't know this. Councilman Bazura doesn't know it. So we hired engineering company, Hennessy, who we've used many times before, and Hennessy throws a curveball at us, and we're like, okay, and then all of a sudden it breaks into the strike zone, and we're like, whoa, wait, nobody's ever used this before. We've never used it before, so let's throw the brakes and change everything. That's the thing. If you're going to try something new, this is what was proposed, and this is what we bid it on. We rolled we rolled the dice at that point, and, Mr. and then later on it was like, nope. Forget it. And again, when, when we realized that we could we could go back to the original spec and save potentially, and we're saying 1.5 million, we don't know. We it might be at the end closer to 3 million. We don't know what the savings is going to be just yet. Well, um, we don't even know if there is savings because the change order may affect the lifespan. You know, that's that's the biggest argument here is, you know, Hennessy's arguing this amount of time, Craig's arguing this amount of time. It's it's basically the argument is the life expectancy of the road. So, so what I'd so like to know, know their savings or more costs. So, so we do know on average what what the life expectancy of is a, of an HMA overlay. What I don't know, because I don't know the specific projects, is what the life expectancy of the re is of the reflective crack layer. Um, that's what I'd like to know from Hennessy. Not just overall, we've been studying it since 1999. I'd like to know where it's been studied and what they've been involved with and their level of expertise here because to my knowledge locally, and we've called Wayne County, we've talked to other communities, we, I'm not sure where it's been done. I, I, I don't know that answer. We'll have them come up and answer that question as soon as we can. My concern is this. We hired Hennessy to run this program basically to do the, all the preparation for it. They've been doing things for us in the past. And in my opinion, they've done well for us. And all of a sudden, now we have a situation where we hit a point to where they're going to do a major multi-million dollar project for us. They come up with a project for us. Then all of a sudden, they get confronted. And now that we're going to have changes. I respect, I've worked with you, you know, a long time. <laughs> and uh, I was here when that other old road was voted on. But... My issue is, if we hire Hennessy to do the work, they did the work, and then all of a sudden we get a change. They didn't basically, from what I'm hearing, they didn't agree with it. But again, when you have a business that's doing a job for the city, it's kind of hard to tell, say no, but yet they kind of, in a way, said no. But yet we continue to do this work. And now we're worrying about all these things we want to ask them now, which I just think that by changing this, I just I have a hard time wondering why we would change something when we were listening to the main company that we deal with and had to do a $20, a $20 million or whatever it is project. And now all of a sudden, it's going to change. But yet we paid them, and we paid them in the past to do a good job for us. They did a great job, but now it changes. And that's one of my concerns. I, I, I just don't like what I've seen, and I don't agree with it. Um, to the chair, if I may respond, uh, Councilman Remick, great points. Um, it's engineering. There are multiple ways to pave a road, asphalt, concrete, um, there's multiple ways to perform maintenance on a road. I'd like, uh, and please feel free to drive out there tonight or tomorrow, well, probably tomorrow when the daylight's showing, be able to see a little bit better. Um, 
but when we're talking about asphalt thickness, if you look at the local streets, now granted, they're not as heavily traveled as Goddard and Paree, but if you look at the roads, Cornell, Mercer, um, I think it's West Point, a couple others right on the east side of Telegraph, right behind Taco Bell. So it's going to be that northeast corner, those roads there. Those roads were paved, they were gravel up until 2007, give or take, maybe 2006. They have two inches of asphalt on them. They actually look better than the roads out here with two inches. You're talking about like Metal Melody Lane and Kensington? No, south, uh, just north of Eureka. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Those, those were some of the last gravel roads in the city to be paved. I've touched a lot of roads. I've, I've been affiliated with this city for a long time. Unfortunately, I have not been here for the last 11 years. Um, and I mentioned this at the last council meeting that I can assure you that I would have not recommended the crack relief layer last time. Back in, if I were here in November, um, that would not be my recommendation. Um, but I can tell you that the proposed cross section that I'm talking about and that I would recommend has been vetted through other road builders. And I would, ar I would argue their level of experience against anybody. Um, and not one of them has told me that they would support the crack relief layer. Now, it's new. Not a lot of people are aware of it. But when you begin compromising your overall cross section and you're not building what, even what, you know, we're talking about getting what we paid for. You're not getting what you paid for. You paid for a five and a half inch cross section. Two, two, and an inch and a half. You're not getting that. And you're not getting it in the drive lanes, which are going to receive the heaviest traffic. Not in the middle of the road. Nobody drives the middle of the road. You get the occasional passer or whatever. Your heavy traffic is in the, in the outside lane, the garbage trucks, local deliveries. That's where your heavy traffic is at. And that is where this cross section is compromised. So how long are we going to get out of this road with, with the three and a half or the four? So I, today, when I spoke to the former director of engineering in high county highway engineer, three and a half inches, 20 to 25 years, if you perform your preventative maintenance, crack sealing. This gentleman that retired, is he even familiar with crack layer? The crack layer or the yes. reflection layer? Because yep. it's so new. Seems like everybody. Came well, it's, it's not new. It's been around since like well, but it seems like nobody It's new for the city of Taylor, but yeah. it's been around for 20 years. Yeah. I think uh, through the chair, I think the problem that we have here and the problem that I feel is that we voted on something and then there was a change and it didn't come back to us right away. That's what I think the biggest problem is. It took a little bit of a time before we. And again, communication is the biggest thing that I, I have to say that all the time, communication, communication. Sure. Because we didn't hear about it, now we're at this point here. Not whether, whether you came back and you said, we've got to change, what are we going to do here kind of thing. We voted on something, and this is what we voted on, now all of a sudden it was changed, but we're not hearing about it until a resident says something about it. Sure. That's what bothers me. I got a quick question too. Sure. Is, are you, you guys are both engineers? Yes. Okay. Are I went this, to Lawrence Tech. Okay, you are this, you have the same type of engineering degree? No. Okay. I have a bachelor's in science and engineering technology. Okay, and what is your... I have a civil engineering degree, an MBA, and an engineering license. Okay. 